This video is sponsored by DistroKid and I'll have more about them at the end of the video. Join me as I unravel the mysteries of Live 12 and compare it with the familiar terrain of Live 11. At first look, there are an awful lot of similarities. If you're a Live 11 user, know that there are only two additional devices added to Live 12. That's RAW, a multi-band saturation device, and MELD, a bitimbral synth similar to Wavetable. Your compressors, reverbs, delays, limiters, other effects and instruments are all unchanged. It's not like the update from Live 10 to Live 11 where there was a substantial change in appearance of devices and an introduction to a whole host of new effects. This time round, the changes are not as easily spotted. Let's dive into it. First off, the transport bar. Not much has changed, but we're now met with a scale function that allows you to set your project to a particular scale. We also have our sample rate up here. Clicking this is a nice shortcut into the Preferences tab. The familiar buttons to switch from session view to a range view are now found here rather than the side, but I'm sure most of you use the tab shortcut anyway. You've probably noticed that the meter arrows are larger and the track colors are now found at both the top and bottom of your lanes too. If you're hot on music theory and already know the preferences shortcut, command and comma, then this isn't really going to save you any time, but it is handy for some. Let's look at the browser over to the left. Tunings, modulators, and all are the additional tabs here. These tunings will integrate with your set and live devices to play pitch patterns in alternate tunings. Not something I can see getting used by a ton of folks, but apparently we'll have an interactive companion site which could shed more light on this. Modulators are now in a folder of their own, as is the all tab where you can find everything listed in Ableton. Hitting edit will also allow you to arrange your favorite tags, which is now found in filters. This has a similar view to that of Machine's filter system. This could be a great addition for those organized producers. For those not so organized, there's also a browse back and browse forward button. Forgot what you had searched for? Browse back will allow you to find it. Something fresh for Ableton is the similar files button that allows you to search for sounds in keeping with that highlighted instrument or sample. This works really great for quick drum rack population. If you're a producer that uses project folders and drags devices in, you'll be pleased to know that returns have been added so you can also drag those into your projects. If you're relatively new to beat making, that'll make absolutely no difference to your workflow. Let's hop over to the right side of the screen. Something to note is the relocation of some of the tools on the right hand side here. In Live 11, you would flick open and close the device view in the bottom right here. In Live 12, it's this illuminated arrow. Hitting this tab will open the mixer view, which can now be found in the arranger too. Hitting this little arrow will change your preferences for what is seen in your tracks. However, if you want to show or hide the same thing in your arrangement, you have to select view, then arrangement track controls. These mixer controls now have a performance impact button, which will highlight a new keep latency button, which is on by default something you might want to turn off. My next video featuring Live 12 will be a guide to all the preferences you want to have on or off when you first open up Live 12. If you want to get started in the most streamlined, time-saving way, subscribe so you don't miss out on that episode. In the negative space between track titles and device view, you have the waveform zoom. Great if you record your own samples and want to make them stand out. If you're using Splice or sites like them, I assume this will be left untouched quite often. Master is now called main and no longer has this hidden window for BPM and time signature. You'll find that in the clip view after double clicking a clip and a blue triangle will highlight a tempo change. Simpler now has round robin sampling as well. It's similar to your follow options in Live 11 when launching clips, but great if you want a diverse selection of hat samples on the same pad. Shortcuts in Live 11. If you're using the QWERTY keyboard for MIDI, you're kind of stuck in this until you hit the M key. This is still the case, but in Live 12, holding shift will allow you to override the MIDI keyboard. So if you want to open up automation whilst you're in keyboard mode, you can. Just hold the shift key and then hit A, and you're in automation. Live 12 also has this neat feature where if you hold down a shortcut like tab, A for automation, or F for fold, it will actually display that change until you let go of that held key. And then it goes right back to the previous window. Kind of handy. If you're a musician that mostly records your music in via a MIDI keyboard and physical instruments, then there may be some tools here that pique your interest, but I can't imagine it's really going to change your workflow significantly. 
Let's have a look. The tabs in audio are almost identical to that of Live 11, so if you're solely an arranger of clips or a one-shot producer, there's no real changes. When you're working in the piano roll, there's a couple of great new MIDI shortcuts. You can command J notes just like you would with clips. Even better, want to extend the MIDI note, command Option J. At the side of the piano roll, you'll find your different clip panels. Everything inside clip and launch will be familiar, plus the addition of the aforementioned scale function. Pitch and time replaces notes, where you'll also be able to add intervals, a new way for creating chords. This is of course in keeping with the chosen scale, but human eyes will be a welcome addition for everyone, I'm sure. There's a transform panel, which comes with a host of options to edit or import your notes. It's also where you'll find an arpeggiator, so you won't always have to add the MIDI device at the start of your chain. Ornament allows you to add grace notes and flams. And recombine helps you rearrange notes in a sequence. I did this live on stream with a drum rhythm to create an alternate hat groove just for one bar. It was nice. Strum is super cool and allows you to get away from using an extra ARP MIDI device. There's a few other note warping parameters here too. It's also where the shift command U shortcut will take you when you quantize your notes. Super confusing the first time when you don't see that new window appear. Under this, we have Generate. Seemingly the hardest of tabs to get my head around, it's like algorithmic note structures. Rhythm is the most helpful in my eyes, but only works on one line, but I can see it being great for hi-hats. Seed is bonkers. I haven't fully understood it yet, but I'm sure it's great for those modular producers out there. Shaper, another one I haven't quite wrapped my head around, especially drawing in notes like this. So do leave a comment below how it could be useful to your workflow. Stacks is probably the most beneficial, with you being able to actually string different chords together. You'll notice we now have the Euclidean sequencer built in under here, which I featured in one of my old episodes. I've heard Ableton will be expanding this tab to other Max for Live devices too, so that will be exciting. Unlike Live 11, there's no envelope or expression tab anymore. This is found at the top of the piano roll alongside MPE, with the controls for the envelopes at the bottom of the piano roll. Once you have that MIDI down, you'll be pleased to see that we now have a bounce in place option, just like that of Logic. Right click, freeze and flatten. Not sure why there's not a shortcut for this, but it saves us one extra step at least. MPE functionality has now been extended to analog, operator and tension. So if you're a fan of these devices and often use something like the push or the seaboard rise, this might push you, no pun intended, in the direction of Live 12. So that's our Live 11, Live 12 side by side. I hope it helped you orientate yourself into the new door or settle to where your new purchase might be. Don't forget that this episode is sponsored by DistroKid, a distributor that made it so easy for me to get my music out into the world and I didn't have to compare it to others out there. It's got all of the tools you need and is constantly rolling out updates and add-ons, unlike Ableton, for no extra charge. You'll get 7% off your first year when you use the link in the description below. Just another reminder, I have a preferences video coming for Live 12 coming your way, so do hit that subscribe button. If you have any specific questions, write them down below. And once again, thank you so much for swinging by, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>